are very pleased to have Sven Amerian with us today at this table, who happens to be running for a seat on the school committee. Sven, as you may recall, was a former city councilor and was also president of the Greater Haverhill Chamber of Commerce as well and is now in the private sector in the solar business. But welcome to the program, Sven. Thank you very much. Here to Brian. talk about your run, first run for uh, the Haverhill School Committee. Can you tell us what compelled you to make that decision to run for the school committee given the fact you'd been formerly a city councilor? Right. So, uh, Frank, uh, my, uh, my children, I have uh, daughters, uh, twins who are uh, age nine right now mm -hmm. and uh, my son who's 11. And um, really, you know, get starting to get involved more in, in their school lives and, uh, you know, their extracurricular activities and things like that really caused me to, to consider this. And it was one event over the summer uh, I read in the newspaper about an issue that the school systems had with uh, special education funding. Yep. And uh, it was a story about how uh, an out-of-state uh, out uh, student came to the district and uh, pretty much, uh, you know, caused a, a you know half a million dollar hiccup in the budget, right. and that really struck a chord with me. Um, you know, in, it won't be too long before my son's in high school, and uh, I said this this is an issue that we really have to address. Um, I realize that uh, it's not necessarily in the uh, in the local scope of the school committee, mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's a conversation that we have to start with uh, with with our state. Legislators, and um, you know, if if we cannot plan for these kind of uh, you know huge budget issues that that come up, uh, and we don't have a, a, a real good mechanism of coping with that, um, that's uh, you know that, that's a serious issue, and and so that struck a chord with me. You know, it just seems totally illogical to me from a mathematical standpoint that when something of this type happens, you know, and it's not you can't adversely look at the child or the family at no, all it's it, because every child deserves an education and whatever their circumstances are they didn't they didn't ask for them they have to cope with them and we're a community and we have to embrace that and that's okay but you know it seems as though when the state seems to lag or stand back or the federal government say well yeah that's your problem unless you go ahead and step up to the, or, or ask us for something I mean, my God, there are people have received, communities have received monies and federal aid either for flooding, food, disaster relief, or because they went over their snow budget, they've received some, uh, some extra funding, either, I believe, from the state uh, as well. So why wouldn't this automatically fall into something of that type? Because that seems to be of a more crucial nature. Hasn't anybody asked that question? Well, you know, it, it probably has been asked. And I've asked the question, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to current administrators and, and current school committee members. But no, nobody seems to have, um, you know, the answer that I'm looking for. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I... I think, you know, we've got to start asking uh, these kind of questions and we've got, to, even if it's a long path to change, we need to take action now. And, uh, you know, certainly as you mentioned, I am not against any student, uh, you know, not getting the full uh, sure. educational experience they, uh, they need, but you can't have one student jeopardizing um, the, 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 you know, the educational uh, experience of, of the, the, the greater bot student body. Well, if you take a look at the, I believe that in that one student was about a half million dollars and there was another student, uh, I guess in total, I mean, there's like a $750,000 surprise. That's right. And, and if you take that, divide that by the cost per educating a student, it's around eight or maybe eighty-five or $9,000 or so, divide that into that and suddenly... That's a lot of students. That's, yeah. that's quite a few students that are affected. And how do you be able to deal with that? So is that one of the things that when I ask, I'd like to ask this question, when I was going to ask you, what would you do that other committee members have not done in order to try to help remedy this problem or any others? Do you have anything else on the horizon you'd like to go ahead and discuss? Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, so, you know, that uh, that issue is uh, is a broader one, as I mentioned, that would have to be taken up uh, at the state level because you know we we have limited control uh, locally to to affect that. Uh, so that's just one sort of overarching initiative that I'd, I'd like to take a look at. Um, one of the things I'd, I'd really like to engender is a bit more of an effort to work as a team. Um, you know, we've uh, we've seen sort of recently uh, some. Um, 
discussions between school committee members that I don't feel are, are that productive. Um, there's sort of been a history on the school committee of, uh, of some, you know, sort of individual egos taking control of situations. And, um, you know, quite contrary to that, my experience on the council was, was very collegial. Um, I thought that uh, when I was a city councillor, we all worked together very well and we treated each other with respect. I would like to see that, uh, you know, come through on the school committee as well. And, you know, I feel that I'm, I'm a balanced individual. I look at both sides of issues. Um, I'm, uh, I'm courteous and, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to, you know, set that as a, as a trend, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm elected. I know that when we talked with other uh, previous school committee candidates as well, they had even mentioned that in the past they feel that uh, the school committee had been labeled as a, a dysfunctional unit, but since that time, they've uh, been able to iron out a lot of their differences and move ahead in a, in a collective uh, formula. Do you think that, that could stand some tweaking as well? I, I think so. There's always room for improvement. Okay. Um, you know, cer certainly uh, they, they've made strides uh, toward, towards improving that situation. But, um, you know, I, I think there's still issues today and, um, you know, we can always do better. How do we deal with the fact that the, in 361 cities and towns in, in the state of Massachusetts, Haverhill in its educational system based upon testing and score results seems to rank in the bottom quarter. That seems to be surprising, but what are the elements that are driving those figures down into the basement of, uh, of that type of issue? What do, you, what do you think can be done to change that? Well, you know, I, I, think, I think one of the issues is, um, you know, standardized testing. Um, certainly, it, it seems that we change our policy on, on the, the tests that we administer. Um, I'm not necessarily a big fan of standardized testing. I don't believe that, uh, you know, they uh, show an accurate representation. I mean, we, we've made a lot of improvements uh, in our school system over the past few years that don't necessarily get reflected uh, in those test scores. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, we have a diverse uh, student body. We have a diverse population. Um, we do have a lot of, uh, of transients as far as moving in and out of the city. Um, we, we, we've got, uh, you know, new students coming all the time. We've got students leaving, um, and you know that needs to be taken into consideration as well. I want to ask you the question. Just have less than a minute left, but you have something that was attributed to you relative to the fact that in your campaign previously, uh, maybe as a city councilor, you said that there were you wanted to be there was an interesting dynamic relative to middle class uh, families leaving the city because of educational concerns. In less than a minute, can you tell us how do you plan to change that around? Sure, well, I think we have to uh, address the public image issue that surrounds our schools. Uh, again, you know, I, we've made great strides, but we need to do more and we need to do a better job of promoting the good things that are happening uh, in our school system, which there are a lot of. And um, yeah, that was a concern when I was campaigning for city council. Uh, there were a lot of uh, families mm -hmm. that said they were moving because they, they had, did not have faith in the public schools. So we either need to address that and show them where they're wrong and where they can, uh, you know, have their faith reinstilled, um, or we need to address those very real issues that, that do exist, uh, co correct those. So we stop the, the brain drain uh, if you will, uh, of, these, of these families leaving, because these are the ones we want to stay. They're engaged, they want to be active in the community, they care about their kids, and they're making an, an active decision to move away from the city in order to give their kids the best chance for success. So you're talking about being substantive in just in about 30 seconds or less. Substantive uh, versus public relations. Well, it, it's, no? it's a combination. Okay. Uh, you know, Who's in charge of that? Well, Whose job would that be? I think that uh, that is probably going to be a collaboration between the superintendent and, uh, and the school committee. Okay, that'll have to be the last word. Sven and Mary got that question in there. Okay, <laughs> I'm very happy to do that. We wish you the best of luck in your, in your uh, campaign for Great. a school committee. Thank you very much, Frank. And we'll be back. Thank you.